Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. It's Invader here, and I'm talking games, games, game topics, and all that corporate deep-fried goodness. So first off, I would like to shout out the Daz cast and the WDFC cast. I made a few guest appearances on those podcasts recently, and I've had a blast talking the game industry topics and just stuff that, well, really doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways, on to some topics that have recently came up, and I tell you, this, the gaming industry, it is not a boring place at all. So recently, the new Metal Gear Survive released, and it seems to be a pretty big failure. The initial estimates from the UK are looking pretty lackluster, and while we still don't know the North American numbers, it's fair to say as the UK is a barometer for the sales, that it's probably not going to be good. Now usually I don't get on the sales numbers much, and to be fair, the reviews for the game just aren't good at all, honestly. Like, summing it up, the game seems like an okay survival game, but it's not much of a Metal Gear game. But what's really ticking people off is the microtransactions, and the worst offender is charging $10 for save slots. Save slots of all things! Now, potentially, this costs up to $30 for the available save slots. And of all the things to charge for, it's absolutely an absurd thing. And I'd love for more people to be speaking up about this. This is just atrocious. This is terrible. When the game was initially announced at Gamescom 2016, it had a rough start. Kojima said that he had nothing to do with it, and then the fans were like, well, what's this? Zombies? Huh? And it's just been on a roller coaster ever since. Look, over the years, I've sort of had a distaste for Konami. Their business practices are atrocious, and they don't seem to have any interest in doing anything with their franchises. Heck, I've even had a video copyright uh, from them immediately after I uploaded a video using Ground Zero's footage. Maybe it was because I was talking well of Hideo Kojima? Who knows? But this is a company that does not care about its fan base and just wants to ride off the coattails of previous accomplishments while putting nothing forward. I really hope that the Metal Gear franchise does see more better games moving forward. It's just it's a shame what Konami's doing. In other news, an interesting thing popped up on Twitter where Microsoft and Sega were seen sharing pictures of a recent visit Sega paid to Microsoft's offices in Japan. A Sonic doll was seen playing Sonic the Hedgehog games on an Xbox One. Now, what could this mean? Honestly, it's, well, it's kind of hard to say. Sega and Microsoft have been rather friendly in recent years. I mean, they've always seemed to have had a, a, a pretty strong relationship since the Dreamcast days and the early Xbox, original Xbox days, but this is something very interesting. And Sega has been letting its own studios like Creative Assembly and Relic make games for Microsoft with Halo Wars 2 and now in development Age of Empires 4. And this could mean anything. Maybe we'll be seeing more Sega Classic games appear on the, the Game Pass? Who knows? But there have also been talks of Microsoft purchasing Sega, as they have said recently that they are looking to buy and acquire studios. But that could be a stretch. Some franchises that Microsoft could be interested in are Total War, Companies of Heroes, as Microsoft has a renewed interest in real-time strategy games, and also the Condemned series, to name a few. But honestly, I'd be shocked if they buy out Sega, if it actually happened, but it's not entirely out of the question either. Or is Microsoft possibly funding a game for them? This leads into another bit of news that popped up after the visit was announced. According to alleged insider Marcus Sellers, Microsoft is funding a sequel to the 2010 Sega title, Vanquish. Now, while I've never played Vanquish, I'm quite familiar with it. It has over-the-top shooting and movement gameplay. I've stated in the past that I've always liked the design to the game, from the world to the enemies, plus mechs. I love me some mechs. The thing is, I'm not sure this game did very well sales-wise. Judging by some data I collected about from Xbox, PlayStation, and Steam sales. The game may have just had over a million sales in a bit. It's definitely not a blockbuster. But, you know, it is an interestingly, uniquely styled third-person shooter that could appeal to the Xbox audience a second time around with the right marketing. And another thing, I'm wondering 
you know, which studio would be developing it. Platinum Games originally made the first game, and considering Microsoft recently canceled Scalebound, I would wonder if they would want to even make a game with them again. Or if Microsoft would want to make a game with Platinum on another title. You know, there's lots of questions to be asked here for sure. Listen, nothing is out of the realm of possibility, especially when money is involved. But right now, I'm... I'm skeptical on this one. Moving on, a few days ago it was revealed by Sony that Horizon Zero Dawn passed 7.6 million copies sold. Wow, <laughs> like that is remarkable for a new IP. Sony had some decent marketing behind the game, good bundles, and DLC support along the way. It had a pretty unique draw to it with the open world narrative it was going for, and especially the robot wild dinosaurs. It was just very catchy to the eye, very appealing. And with the rise of games as a service and microtransactions that nickel and dime consumers for game safe slots, this is kind of refreshing to hear, actually very refreshing. And this just shows that single player story driven games do matter and they still have a solid place in gaming. Also, I want to touch on some information that Microsoft let out a few days ago. It was revealed that over 800 840 million hours worth of Xbox 360 games have been played on the Xbox One. Damn, that's a really big number. I mean, it's really interesting considering the amount of people out there in the community that downplay it, but it's actually a very popular system selling feature now. Not only that, but on the Xbox One X, the games get almost instant enhancements to graphic improvements, and in most cases, overall stability. I realize that's not for everybody, not everybody will use this, but obviously, for a good portion of people, it's a welcome addition to the ecosystem. And I just hope that they keep updating the games list each month for both Xbox 360 and original Xbox titles. You know, and other console makers should really take note of this because it is an awesome feature to have uh, native backwards compatibility. And lastly, there seems to be a recent trademark by Microsoft for something called Mixplay. The description mentions an application that will allow users to personalize content and games to play, download, share, and exchange. Going on, it says that it's computer software for creating, viewing, publishing, producing, broadcasting, playing, animation, video, sound, and graphics. Now what it seems to be is a new form of Upload Studio. And Upload Studio hasn't been updated in years, and a lot of content creators that use it myself included, obviously, have been wondering what's been going on with the app. And it looks like there's going to be a massive rebranding under the Mixer name, and we'll probably incorporate a bunch of new features into it, and the ones that probably we already have. I know for myself, I would love to see some sort of save feature, because there's so many times that I've been in the middle of a project and the app just glitches out on me and crashes. What a pain in the butt that's been. That, and I would also like the ability to use a third-party microphone, because headsets just don't necessarily cut it audio-wise. I would love to get more clarity that way. And also just general stability updates, because the audio sometimes cuts out, you miss out on a lot there, and just so on and so forth. Don't get me wrong, I've been looking at moving forward onto something more advanced software-wise, that's always been in the mix. But this is still a nice feature to have for content creators. In any case, it's an encouraging sign of things to come for the ecosystem, and I'm glad that they're working on moving things forward. Well, that's it for now, guys. It's obviously never a dull moment in the gaming industry, right? <laughs> As always, everyone, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Your views really mean a lot to me, and just thanks for the support. Anyways, Invader, out.